So today I have a collection, a treasury of fairy tales, a well-loved collection of fairy tales. I actually bought this at the, well if you're from the UK you would say charity shop, if you're from the pond you would say a thrift store. So I bought this at the thrift store today. Charity shop. <laughs> so it's quite a collection. I think these are a lot of different characters from by Lucy Kincaid, illustrated by Eric Kincaid and Jerry Embleton, based on the contents have been published previously by Remax Books in Omnibus of Fairy Tales 1979, made in Newmarket, England. Fairy tales are stories which have been told to children everywhere throughout the ages. Almost every country has its own folklore, which is handed down from one generation to the next, told and retold in many variations. As centuries passed and languages changed, new versions of old tales came into being. These were recorded by various writers and traditional themes were used in creating new stories. Many famous collections of fairy tales were published and thus became part of a heritage of literature. This book compiles 32 of the most popular and well-loved fairy tales and nursery stories which have been retold in an up-to-date readable style by Lucy Kincaid. These beautiful, the beautiful illustrations in full colour by Eric Kincaid and Jerry Embleton have been carefully designed to capture the imagination of both young and old. This book has been created for children of all ages to treasure always. So, it's actually in alphabetical order, not numerical order, which confused me. I thought that they, uh, like Aladdin was 50 pages long or something. So, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Chicken Lickin, which States as Chicken Little, Choosing a Wife, Cinderella, Foolish Jack, some of these I haven't actually heard of, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Hansel and Gretel, Jack and the Beanstalk, Jorinda and Joringle, Puss and Boots, Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, The Brave Little Tailor, The Brave Tin Soldier. The Elves and the Shoemaker, The Emperor's New Clothes, The Frog Prince, The Golden Goose, The Peddler of Swatham, The Pied Piper of Hamelin, The Precious Gift, The Princess and the Pea, The Shepherdess and the Sweep, The Three Little Pigs, The Three Spinners, The Ugly Duckling, The White Dove, The Three Masterpieces, Thumbling, Thumbling, Twelve dancing princesses down at the bottom there. So, I'm just going to go in numerical order, unlike that. The first story we have is Rapunzel. So here's Rapunzel's tower. One day, a prince was riding in the forest when he heard a girl singing. He got down from his horse and led him quietly along a mossy footpath until he came to a clearing. In the clearing was a tower, 
as round and as straight as a giant pine tree. At the very top of the tower, which was so tall it looked as though its roof was touching the sky, there was a tiny window. It was from the tiny window that the sound of the voice was coming. It will be a long climb up the stairs to the top, said the prince, shading his eyes and looking upwards. But I must find out who is singing so sweetly. He looped the horse's bridle over a branch and went to look for a way in. He walked around the tower a hundred times. He could find no door, no window, no hidden entrance. It was impossible to climb up the outside, for the sides were so smooth there was neither crack nor ledge where he could put his feet. In the end, the disappointed prince had to give up his quest and ride home with the sound of the voice drifting in the wind behind him. The prince could not forget the voice. He dreamed about it in daydreams and dreamed about it in his sleep. He rode into the forest every day just to hear it. One day when he was sitting in the branches of the tree closest to the tower, an old witch came out of the forest. The prince kept very quiet and watched to see what she would do. She went to the foot of the tower and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Immediately a long braid of golden hair tumbled from the window at the top of the tower. It was so long its tip touched the ground. The old witch caught hold of it as though it was a rope and someone in the room at the top of the tower pulled her upwards until she disappeared. The prince was so excited that he almost fell out of the tree. He waited until the old witch had come down again and hobbled away into the forest. Then he went to the foot of the tower himself. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, he called, let down your hair. Again the golden hair came tumbling from the tower, but this time it was a handsome prince who used it as a rope and not an ugly old witch. In the tiny room at the top of the tower was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. Who, who are you? She gasped as he climbed over the windowsill and into the room. I thought you were the witch. Do not be afraid, said the prince. I will not hurt you. He told her his name and how he had heard her singing when he was riding in the forest. I sing because I am lonely, said Rapunzel. I have been locked alone in this tower since I was twelve years old. My only visitor is the witch who brought me here. I will help you escape said the prince. How can you, sighed Rapunzel. I cannot climb down my own hair and there is no other way in or out of the tower. I will bring you a silken ladder, promised the prince. That evening the old witch visited Rapunzel again. You're much heavier than the prince, said Rapunzel, without thinking of the consequences of her words. Why is that? The witch was so angry she almost exploded. She had locked Rapunzel in the tower to keep her away from handsome princes. She wanted Rapunzel to love no one in the world but herself. She snatched a pair of scissors from the table, and before Rapunzel could stop her, she had cut off her long braids of golden hair. Now your prince will never get into the tower, screamed the witch. And then, because she really was very angry indeed, she banished Rapunzel to a faraway place. Even if the prince did find a way into the tower, Rapunzel would not be there. The prince had no way of knowing what had happened, of course. And the next day, when he called to Rapunzel to let down her hair, he thought it was she who threw the long golden braids over the windowsill. But it was not. It was the witch. It was the witch who pulled the prince upwards and upwards. You will never see Rapunzel again, she screamed as the prince looked over the windowsill and straight into her ugly face. And with that terrible cry, she let go the braids so that they and the prince fell to the ground. The prince was bumped and bruised, and when at last he stirred and opened his eyes, he could not see. He was blind. The prince thought Rapunzel was locked in the tower with the witch, and though he tried, he could find no way of helping her. He wandered about the countryside, blind, lonely, and unhappy. And then one day, just by chance, he came to the place where Rapunzel was living. He heard her singing, and though her voice was sad as a flower without petals, he recognized it as once. Rapunzel, he called softly, 
Is that you? Rapunzel was overjoyed, but when she saw the prince's poor blind eyes, she wept hot, splashing tears. Some of her tears fell onto the prince's face. Suddenly, he could see. Her tears had broken the witch's terrible spell. Rapunzel and the prince were married and lived happily ever after. And as for the old witch, she was never heard of or seen again. Perhaps she is still locked in the tower. Once she had let go of the braids, she had no way of getting out of the tower herself, had she? Quite an interesting take on that. And the story, I don't think I've... I think I've heard it told that way before. It was interesting. Very detailed picture of the witch and the prince. So I will read the next story as well, as that was quite short actually. Twelve Dancing Princesses. And we have here. Dancing shoes. Once upon a time, there was a king who had twelve beautiful daughters and an unusual problem. Every night, when the twelve princesses were sent to bed, their shoes were perfectly sound. Every morning, when they came down to breakfast, their shoes were full of holes. Every day, the king had to buy twelve pairs of new shoes. That was expensive though the expense did not worry the king. What did worry him was not knowing why the shoes were full of holes. He tried locking the bedroom door on the outside when all the princesses were safely inside, and sleeping with the key under his pillow made no difference. The princess's shoes were still full of holes in the morning. The king was so puzzled and so vexed because he couldn't find out why it was happening that he issued a proclamation. It said, Whomsoever shall discover why the princess's shoes are full of holes every morning shall have one of the princesses for his wife and shall inherit my kingdom when I die. Princes came from far and wide to try and find an answer to the mystery. Not one of them succeeded. The puzzled king was beginning to despair of ever finding an answer when a poor soldier came to the palace. The proclamation had said nothing about being a prince if he wanted to solve a mystery, so he had decided to make an attempt at it himself. The king received the soldier as kindly and as grandly as any of the princes, and that night he was taken to a room adjoining the princess's bedroom so that he could keep watch. Now it so happened that the soldier had been kind to a wise old woman on his way to the palace, and she had given him a cloak and some advice. When the, when the princesses offer you wine, she had said, pretend to drink it and then pretend to fall asleep. Wear the cloak when you want to be invisible. That night, when the princesses were ready for bed, the eldest said to the soldier, you must be thirsty, take this cup of wine and drink. The soldier remembered the wise woman's words and pretended to drink. And then he pretended to get drowsy. Presently he closed his eyes as though he was asleep. As soon as they heard him snore, the princesses jumped from their beds and put on their shoes and their prettiest dresses. Are you all ready? asked the eldest. We are ready, replied her sisters. The eldest princess pressed a carved leaf on the end of her bed. The bed moved slowly to one side and revealed a hidden staircase leading down into the earth. The princesses picked up their skirts and hurried down the steps, the eldest leading the way and the youngest following last of all. It's a very nice picture. The soldier, who of course was awake and had seen everything, put the cloak the old woman had given him round his shoulders, and covered him from head to toe and made him completely invisible. He ran after the princesses and caught up with them at the bottom of the steps. He was in such a hurry not to be left behind that he accidentally stepped on the hem of the youngest princess's dress and tore it. Oh, she gasped, someone has stepped on my dress. Don't be silly, said her sisters. 
You caught it on a nail. Come, hurry. We must not be late. At the bottom of the steps, there was a wood in which all the trees had silver leaves. The soldier broke one off and put it in his pocket. What was that? cried the youngest princess in alarm, as she heard the snap of the breaking twig. It was nothing, said her sisters. Next, they passed through an avenue in which all the trees had golden leaves. Again, the princess heard the snap of a breaking twig, but again her sisters told her it was her own imagination playing tricks on her. The running princesses came to the shores of a wide blue lake. At the edge of the lake were twelve boats, with twelve handsome princes sitting, waiting at the oars. The soldier sat in the boat which was to carry the youngest princess. I wonder what makes the boat so heavy today, said the prince as he pulled harder than usual on the oars. On the far side of the lake there was a magnificent palace from which the sounds of music and merrymaking came, and it was there that the mystery of the worn out shoes was solved, and twelve princesses danced the entire night with the twelve handsome princes. Just before dawn, and when all their shoes were in shreds, the princes rode the princesses back across the lake, and the princesses ran home. As soon as they reached their bedroom, they hurried to look at the soldier. He had run home ahead of them, and they found him on his bed, still sleeping. Or so they thought. We are safe, said the eldest princess. The soldier followed the princesses to the secret palace the next night, and the following night too. On the third night, he took the jewelled cup from which the youngest princess drank, and slipped it into a pocket in the invisible book. On the morning after the third night, the king sent for the soldier and said, Your time is up. Either tell me why my daughter's shoes are worn through every morning, or be banished forever. Your daughter's shoes are worn because they dance every night in an underground palace, said the soldier, and he told the king all that he had seen. The princesses gasped and turned pale as the soldier took the silver leaf, the golden leaf, and the jeweled cup from his pocket and handed them to the king. They knew now they could not deny that what the soldier said was true. We must confess, said the eldest princess. The king was so relieved to have the mystery of the worn shoes explained, he couldn't stay cross with his daughters for a while. Now we shall be able to sleep at night, he said. The king kept the promise he had made in the proclamation, and the soldier married the princess of his choice. And many years later, when the old king died, he became king in his place heard that story before, so that was very interesting. Very strange, but interesting. So, thank you for watching. And I hope that you tune in again.